Hello everyone. Welcome to Come Sit at My Table. We're Tom and Melissa and we're really appreciative that you've joined us for this video. Today we are making Sloppy Joes. It's one of my very favorite things to have in the fall and winter. It's just kind of a comfort food on a bun. So let's talk about what we're going to need to make Sloppy Joes. First, we're going to start with a couple of tablespoons of butter. And we're going to put that in our Dutch oven or our kettle or whatever you have with three pounds of ground beef. And we're just going to brown those together. Then after we brown it and drain it, we're going to add one chopped onion. And you can see that I have a pretty good sized onion here. People always say, well, how big were the onions? How big were the peppers? So I thought I'd leave this out today to show you. This is just a large sweet yellow onion. Then we're also going to add one chopped green bell pepper and it was a pretty good sized bell pepper and one yellow pepper. It wasn't as large as the green pepper, but it was probably a medium. We're also going to use three teaspoons of minced garlic. Now, if you want to chop your own garlic, you want to mince it up, that would be wonderful. You're going to need about six cloves. But if you've bought this minced garlic that you keep refrigerated, you're going to need about three teaspoons. We're also going to add two cups of ketchup, one cup of water, two tablespoons of brown sugar, two teaspoons of chili powder, one teaspoon of dry ground mustard. Now on some boxes, this will be called dry mustard. Others, it'll be called ground mustard, but either one is the same. You're also going to need one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. If I mispronounced it, you don't have to correct me. <laughs> Nobody that I know says it correctly, but I call it Worcestershire sauce. You're going to need two tablespoons of tomato paste. Now I've got this that has basil, garlic, and oregano in it, but you don't have to have that, just plain tomato paste. Then we're going to add one teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of pepper. I'm going to say it again, just like I do in every one of our videos. If you can't have salt, leave it out. It's not necessary. It does give the Sloppy Joe's some good flavor, but if you can't have it because of health reasons, then by all means leave it out. If you put that in and you feel like it's not enough and you feel like it needs more salt, then put more salt, that's up to you. Okay, so we're going to start by turning on our heat and I'm going to put in a couple of tablespoons of butter and let that start to melt and let our ground beef start to fry. Now I know that you don't want to stay here and watch this ground beef get browned and drained. So we will stop here, we will get this browned and when it's all chopped up and ready, we'll come back and show you the next step. We'll be right back. Our burger has been browned and drained, and now we're ready to add the next set of ingredients. So we're going to start with our onions. We will also add in our green peppers, our yellow peppers, and our garlic. three teaspoons of garlic. Okay, now we are going to cook this <clears throat> for a few minutes just to start to soften up those onions and peppers and to let that garlic kind of flavor the meat. And as soon as the onions and peppers are starting to soften, we will come back and do the next step. We'll be right back. Our onions, peppers, and garlic have been in for about five minutes. 
Melissa, come in here and let everybody see the colors of these peppers and onions is just wonderful. Doesn't that look nice? Perfect. Now we're going to just add the rest of our ingredients. So we're going to start by putting in our water and our ketchup. I don't know if the story I read is true or not, but I believe the story is that Sloppy Joe's got their name from a man in Iowa who worked in a diner and was looking for a new way to serve a sandwich. And he ended up putting some tomato sauce in some ground beef with some seasoning and served it on a bun. And that became Sloppy Joe's. And by the way, the story is that his name was Joe. Now, I can't guarantee you that's true, but that is what I read online. And we know if it was on the internet, it must be true. <laughs> sure. Okay, maybe not. But that is what I read. And two tablespoons of tomato paste going in. Okay. Now, all we're going to do is heat this through. And then we're going to come back for one more very important step that we've not even talked about yet. So, stay with us, don't leave, and while we're thinking about it, if you don't mind, we sure would appreciate you going right below this video and giving us a thumbs up that just says you liked our video. And if you've not already, we sure would appreciate you clicking that subscribe button. Now, I'm going to get all this mixed together and let it cook for just a few minutes to evaporate some of that liquid. We know we put in a cup of water and we need to let that cook off. So let's let this cook for, oh, just a few minutes. And then we'll be back to talk about one more extremely important step in serving Sloppy Joes. We'll be right back. So what is this last important step after our Sloppy Joe mix is ready? The bun, of course. You just have to have a toasted bun for good sloppy joes. Now, you can toast buns many different ways. If you have a toaster, you can certainly stick them in a toaster. That works just fine. If you have a griddle, like we have right here, you can just butter them and put them on the griddle and let them get brown that way. If you don't have a griddle, or you don't want to use your toaster, then you can just butter the insides of the bun, turn them buttered side up, put them on a cookie sheet and under the broiler in your oven. You will have to watch them fairly closely because they will burn quickly if you've got them in the oven under your broiler. This way, is probably the easiest for me. And so that's how we normally do them. But while that one is toasting, I'm going to go ahead and do a taste test for you with this one that we have already fixed. Now, I'm fine with just eating the sandwich like this. But this is not my preferred way to eat them. I like to open them up and do them open face and put sloppy joe mix on both sides and then eat it with a fork. Now, for those of you who are wondering, I've already asked Melissa. <laughs> she did not want a bite. That would be a little messy, I think, to eat on camera. Mm. Wow. That is absolutely delicious. 
That is so good. Let me also say, we cooked this for probably 15 to 20 minutes. But you can cook it as long as you want to it, till it gets to your preferred sloppiness. <laughs> the longer you cook it, the drier it's going to get. We don't like dry foods. We don't like any dry food. So I did it about 15 to 20 minutes. It's still pretty wet. Um, you can see there's a lot of sauce down in here. If I pull it back, you can see all this sauce still in the bottom. So it's still pretty sloppy. And that's how we like it. But if you want it drier, just continue to simmer it until it gets to the point that you like it. All right. We really do appreciate you joining us at our table and watching our videos. It really has been a pleasure to get to know some of you, to read your comments. And so we really do thank you for being a part of our family and coming to sit at our table. But remember, you are always welcome to come sit at my table. Have a great day.